Bueno, bienvenidos a todos. Eh, es un nuevo webinar de primera reunión. Eh, en este caso tenemos un invitado súper especial, eh, que es Jeremy, que es ganador del premio al SDR del año, que ahora vamos a hablar un poquito de eso. Eh, unos pequeños anuncios parroquiales. Eh, por un lado, eh, si quieren hacer eh, este webinar, está siendo subtitulado en vivo, abajo hay una cajita que dice subtítulos, cuando van abajo de la, del menú, ahí se apretan subtítulos, vamos a tener una traducción en simultáneo de subtítulos, eh, bueno, está Liz haciendo eso, que es un trabajo muy difícil, porque <ríe> hay que hablar, y es hay que escuchar y escribir a la vez, así que vamos a hacerlo lo mejor posible. Eh, si quieren hacer preguntas, está el botón de Q&A, ahí pueden hacer preguntas, eh, si quieren chatear, pueden chatear, eh, si quieren hacer, pueden contactar a todos, de hecho si quieren contar de dónde vienen, qué puesto tienen, eh, de, de qué ciudades, etcétera, si quieren contar eso en el chat, lo pueden hacer en la parte de chatear, y en las preguntas y respuestas, eh, este, en las preguntas y respuestas pueden hacer preguntas para que contestemos. Eh, el botón de, de subtítulos está abajo, eh, subtitles, eh, que es... A ver, Liz, si querés escribir. Eh, mientras, I will uh, now, Jeremy, I'm uh, introducing you um, as, uh, well, as I said on the communication, uh, Jeremy, you're the, the winner of the best SDR of 2018, last year, on the Sales Development Conference. And, well, uh, I'm really happy to, to have you on, on, on the show uh, this week. Uh, I think uh, you will add a lot of value to many SDRs or SDR managers that are uh, starting a, or, or working on SDRs, kind of new discipline. So instead of talking myself, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Who are you and what, what do you do at Lead IQ and what is Lead IQ as well? Sure. Yeah. So thanks for having me on, Andres. Yeah. And, um, Yeah, I am our SDR team lead here and really helping to build the pipeline for our SDR organization and um, just out there prospecting, you know, just doing it day in and day out, um, you know, making those calls and making those emails. It's not easy. It's not easy to get these people, um, you know, who have no idea who I am and they have no idea who Lead IQ is yet you know, it's my job to start a conversation and get them to give up what is their most valuable asset, their time. You know, that's what, you know, people are so busy. These executive people, everybody's just so busy. There's, you know, a million different projects people are working on and, you know, they have goals that they have to hit and they have numbers they have to hit and they have a lot of different projects and priorities, you know, and there's so many different products and services out there that they could, that they could choose from as well as they could just stay with the status quo. They could just keep doing business the way they're doing it now. Like, why do they need to change? Why do they need to, you know, give up, you know, their precious time, 30 minutes out of their day to talk to a sales rep about your product? Like, you know, that is the, the job of sales development to be able to make that, make that, make those conversations happen. Um, and that's what I do here at Lead IQ and specifically what Lead IQ does. Um, we make that part of it a little bit easier. Um, you know, we make it really easy for sales reps, SDRs, account executives, whoever a sales rep is to identify the right accounts to reach out to the right people at those accounts and click a button and be able to get contact info, phone numbers, e emails for those people, get them into their CRM fast, easy and efficiently so that tedious manual list building and sourcing of leads part of part of the job is a lot more efficient so they can spend more of their time actually selling right right so yeah i mm. think many people here on the webinar maybe they will be submitting any lead on lead iq then because you know maybe people work as sdr and these kind of tools are are really helpful for for the sdr job um yep. So, uh, Jeremy, I, first question I would like to ask you is, um, how, uh, what, what do you think is the, the elements that make you this success uh, and, and winning the, the year, SDR of the year last year? Which, which elements do you think are most important? Yeah, I would, I would say three right off the bat. So, one, business acumen. Two, 
is just that drive and hunger and determination, you know, to kind of be persistent and not just give up so easily if a prospect is showing some resistance and they might have a, an objection, you know, maybe at first they're saying not interested or they're saying no, you know, not just kind of giving up, like being able to kind of do it in a professional way um, and kind of, you, know, they, you re reply, to, you email somebody once or twice and they don't reply, okay, you're, you're just going to give up. No, keep, you know, keep reaching out to those people. So there's just that kind of determination and, and you know, that persistence um, you know, along with, like I said, the business acumen. And then the third thing I think um, is, is very important that's helped me out a lot personally is creativity. You know, thinking outside the box and not just doing what everybody else is doing because it's so easy to, you know, it's, it's, I see it so much when I get emails. I don't, I'm not really a decision maker here for, <laughs> for, what we, for what we do and the products we buy, but I still get emails from people um, like prospecting me and trying to like sell to us and they all just look the same. They all just look, all these emails, they just looked so generic and they look like a template and you know, there's no real origin originality in them. You know, there's no real thought put into it. Like, you know, don't be afraid to kind of go outside the box. You know, even if, even if you, you're an SDR and your manager said, okay, here's the script that you need to go by. And here's the templates that we want you sending in emails. Like if, if that, if I was an SDR and I was told that by my manager, I would first kind of push back a little bit um, and say to my manager, Hey, you know, that doesn't really, I, I, that, I don't think that's going to work. You know, can I try something different? Can I kind of break out of that you know, that can generic script and template email you want me to send. Do I have some freedom here to try some different things? That's what I would do first, you know, if I'm an SDR and, you know, see what they say, see if they actually give you the freedom to try some different things, you know, and if they don't, then I would find a new job, you know, because that just doesn't work. Like just doing the same boring emails and same boring script that everybody else is doing. You got to, got to be able to try some different things, experiment, think outside the box. And, um, you know, because like there's bots, there's bots out there, there's technology that right now that's like writing prospecting emails. And it, it, when, when, when a prospect, an executive, a, a VP, C-level executive gets an email, they don't even know, they can't even tell like, you know, 80, 90% chance that wasn't even an actual human that wrote that email, you know? And, you know, so when you write an email, like you should be that prospect, you, the number one goal should be that for that prospect to be able to tell beyond a shadow of a doubt that that was an actual human being that wrote that email and not just some bot, not just some software blasting it out to hundreds and thousands of people, you know? So that's why you have to be original, be unique, be different um, and use some creativity. So, um, that's kind of the three characteristics I would say business acumen that that grit you know determination persist persistency and the creativity okay that's a good starting point to um, to ask you a question about these three points <laughs> um, but you talk too much now about creativity and I want to know uh, even more so okay. how how uh, which, which things do you think you made very creative to outperform on your on your job yeah so a um, couple ways that I use creativity in um, when, when I'm prospecting as an SDR one is videos and one is gifts mm -hmm. um, or, or gifs I think it's gifs right yes <laughs> um, yeah, yes <laughs> so so for gifts I have a few that I that I like to use and you know, it's not like you have to spend a bunch of time, like every single time you send an email and find a clever, funny GIF. Like one, for example, um, is, mm -hmm. you know, we have at Lead IQ, we have a part of our selling point is we have a really, really smooth um, integration, the way our product integrates with Salesforce and HubSpot CRM and SalesLoft and Outreach. And if somebody's using one of those other tools that we integrate well with, you know, that's a good fit for us. And I might bring that up in the email. So I have a GIF that 
it's it's pretty funny um it's a piece of toast it's like a, it's like a cart it's like a cartoon it's like a cartoon where the piece of toast ha is going like this with its arm like spreading the butter all over itself with like a smut with like a a funny look on its face Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just kind of spreading the butter around its stomach. You know, this piece of toast like is, is doing that with arms and legs and stuff. It's, it's ridiculous. But, you know, I put that in emails and I say, hey, so-and-so, you know, hey, Bob, our outreach integration is smooth as butter. And then I put the GIF, you know, and then I, you know, just say something else, you know, like, so that's one GIF that I use. Um, Another one is, you know, I'll, I have a GIF where a dog is actually doing a backflip. You know, it's this cute little dog, and then it it does a backflip. You know, it goes like, you know, it's like <laughs> breathing, and then after that, it like it does a backflip. You know, it's just a GIF. So I might say to in an email to a prospect, "Hey, Bob, um, most SDR teams when they start using Lead IQ, they have so much success. They're so excited. They're doing backflips." <laughs> and then I say that in the email and then I put the gift, you know, so, so that's, um, some of it is gifts. And then, but even more so, I, I'd say the creativity that I, that I use is, um, in video. So I use a tool called Vidyard. There's Vidyard. There's a bunch of other tools out there like Videolicious, um, Wistia, Bomb Bomb. There's a few out there where you can really mm -hmm. easily without much work, you know, you, you could just click a button and then record a video and then just click another button and then send that video to a prospect. You know, there's tools out there. It's, it's pretty cool. So we use Vidyard. And so like one example um, of a video that I'll send people is if I notice that a prospect um, at like a really good account, maybe they viewed my LinkedIn profile, you know, because I'm always throughout the day, I'm constantly clicking on, on LinkedIn and seeing who viewed, you know, who viewed my profile. Uh, and if I see a good prospect, you know, for at a good account, you know, reached, uh, viewed my LinkedIn profile, usually I think most reps, they see that they're going to, they're going to hop on that lead. You know, they're going to jump on it. They're going to try to call that person or email them, you know, but usually they, they kind of do it in a weird salesy way. They'll, they'll say, Hey, so-and-so saw you viewed my LinkedIn profile. Our company does blah, 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 like some boring generic, you know, sales pitch. What I do is. I put, I send the prospect an email subject line says made you a rap video. Like who's not going to open that, you know, yeah. made you, made you a rap video. They open the email and it says, Hey Bob, notice you viewed my LinkedIn profile, but I didn't want to be weird about it. So I made you this cool rap video. And then you, <laughs> and then below that is the embedded, the embedded video where you click the play button. And then I don't know if it, you know the song, um, by Michael Jackson and Roswell. I always feel like somebody's watching me. Like that, <laughs> yeah. that's, that song is playing. It's me dancing around in our office here to that <laughs> song with one of my coworkers is like lurking around the corner, like watching me, like going like this, <laughs> peering around the corner. And it's just like a 30 second video of me just dancing around. And I have no idea that he's back there watching me, you know? So then I send that video below that video is like, you know, a one or two sentence value prop about lead IQ and how we can maybe help that person's company, you know, but that video, you know, that's creative. That's, you know, it's going to make that person laugh. Another example is um, if I notice the prospect recently got promoted. Um, there's a video that we just shot recently where um, there's that song, you know, from the Jeffersons, the TV show, the Jeffersons moving on up, moving yeah. on up to the east side moving on up so it's a, again just like a 20 30 second video where me and a couple of my coworkers are just dancing around going like going like yeah you you did it yeah <laughs> giving thumbs up and oh yeah awesome and we're just kind of dancing around and and to, with that song playing that song is playing you yeah. know moving on up so then I, I send that to the prospect subject line of the email is made you a music video you know and then in the in the email i say hey bob that's awesome that you recently got promoted to, you know, director of sales, made you this cool music video in your honor. Boom. There's the embedded video. He clicks on it, you know, and he sees us dancing around and moving on up, you know, below that I put like a one or two sentence value prop about, you know, him, his business, you know, where lead IQ could potentially help, you know, and then a call to action. So just, a, just some examples of uh, creativity that I, that I've used. Okay. Yeah. What, First question about this is, 
how do prospects react? Because obviously it's something totally out of the box. Uh, how is the how are the replies, the reactions they, they've got? Yeah, so um, I never really got any bad, you know, um, reactions where, you know, I've never really had anybody that's been like, oh, this is unprofessional or, you know. Um, I actually at one, one point had a prospect reply to a video um, and it actually wasn't really like a, like a silly, you know, um, silly video. It was just, it was more formal and professional, but she just replied back and she said, I hate videos. You know, I, I, I hate, I hate, you know, when sales reps send videos and then she said, blah, blah, blah. We're currently using this tool. Um, at the end of the quarter, we're going to be doing this project and you can reach back out to me then and we'll take a look at this. So it's like, it, you know, she said, you know, it, it, she said that she hated the videos, but it still worked. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like it worked. It worked though. You got a reply. You gave me all this information. We have next steps lined up. Like, yeah. okay, yeah, you said you hate it, but it, but it worked. Like yeah. another one. Um, sometimes I, I do gu guitar videos, and I don't even know how to play the guitar. Like, I, <laughs> but I think that's why it gets even more response, and people get a kick out of it even more, and it works even better because the prospect sees this like you know, this idiot who doesn't even know how to hold the guitar and like doesn't even know how to play it. And he's like making up the, 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 the lyrics as he goes, like one prospect replied back and, um, and he, his re response was, this is effing, you know, the F word, this is effing hilarious. I just, <laughs> he's like, I just shared this with our entire SDR team. We're using video, but we're not using it like this. You know, he basically was like saying he wanted me to train their SDR team and that, <laughs> that company is now a customer of ours. And right. at one point um, I had sent out 24 kind of silly, wacky, you know, song videos to prospects out of 24 accounts. I got 23 replies um, and 12 of them booked meetings that converted to sales opportunities. Four of them are now customers. Right. Wow. So that's over a 90% reply rate, 23 out of 24 replied you know, 12 out of 24 sales up, you know, so 50% conversion rate to opportunity, you know, and four out of 24 are now customers. Like those are insane, just unbelievable, um, you know, conversion numbers. Um, but, you know, I just did it by just kind of like researching the prospect a little bit and you know, making some silly goofy song, um, you know, that I, and I don't even know how to play the guitar, but um, I think in, you know, this day and age, like, it kind of takes a little bit of that creativity to break through the noise, you know, and make it look to that prospect. Like you, a, you actually took the time to learn about their business and you actually took the time to, to make a video and, and, you know, B, you know, you're putting yourself out there, you know, and, and C, it's just different. It's just different than all the other, you know, shitty emails that they get because sometimes what I'll do, and I, I challenge any SDR or SDR manager out there to do this. I challenge them every now and then go into your spam folder, go into your spam folder and look at the emails that are going into your spam folder. And I, I guarantee you most of them, you know, are sales emails, cold emails, prospecting emails from SDRs who are trying to reach you but you, you no, nobody does this though. Nobody looks in their spam folder. You only see the emails that get in your actual inbox. But I I do this sometimes. I I look at my spam folder, and what I see is you know emails that are just so generic, and they're just so temp. They just look like such templates. Like no thought is behind them at all. They're not literally right before I got on this on this webinar call, like 20 minutes ago, I got an email from a competitor they compete with us and they're, tr and they're and they're trying to sell to me and book a meeting like obviously you know they didn't take the time to yeah. research our my company and see what we do and ha they had no idea that that we were a competitor all they did probably was just load a list like pull pull a list you know a list of contacts and mm -hmm. just take take an email and then just blast it out to you know a ton of people you know like and, and the other thing that I notice with when I look at the emails in my spam folder, they're just text. They're just text emails. They look very formulaic. You know, they all follow the same pattern, the same template. It's hi, you know, hi Jeremy. I hope you're well. I'm reaching out because 
blah, 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 blah. We have a product that does blah, blah, blah. We're the best in class. You know, we're the best product for blah, 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 blah. You know, um, can I get 15 minutes, you know, next week? Regards their name, you know? So it just always looks the same. So I try to like break up the formatting a little bit when I do emails and I'll start the, I'll start the message on the same line. I'll put, I'll put hi, Bob, comma, you know, I noticed that blah, 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 but I'll put it on the same line as, as his name, just so it looks different, you know, and I, I'll get rid of the, the sign off like cheers or regards or seriously or sincerely or best wishes. I won't use that, you know, I'll just put Jeremy, I'll just put my name at the bottom, you know, like under the call to action. Sometimes I'll, I'll combine the call to action with part of the value prop. You know, because every other, you know, they, every other sales email, they all look the same. They have like, oh, we can help you with blah, blah, blah. And then the next skip a line, you know, can we get 15 minutes next week on the next line down? So I'll kind of combine it. I'll put like in the, I'll put the call to action as, you know, how does next Tuesday morning work for us to discuss how you could 2X your pipeline generation by the end of Q3, question mark. You know, all of that in one, in one line, it's kind of combining, you know, the call to action with the value prop in one, you know, so I'll just kind of like do different things to just make it not look like a template as well as not doing just text, you know, like 90, 90, like every hundred percent of all spam emails that I get in my spam folder are only text, but like 90% of the emails that I actually send are not just text. I have a GIF or I have a video or I have a screenshot of some kind, like a screenshot, like if I do like on my Mac, you know, command shift four, or yeah. if you have a Windows, yeah. it's snippets. Where I'll screenshot, maybe, you know, somebody posted something on LinkedIn, uh, one of our customers posted something on LinkedIn about how much success that they're having with our tool. I'll screenshot that and put that in emails. You right. know, visually, it kind of breaks it up. It's not, A, it's not just text, so it's gonna stand out and look more like a more personalized email to that person, because it's not just a bunch of words you know it's a it's an image it's a screenshot there and then b it's third party validation i could just say how great lead iq is till i'm blue in the face but it, it carries a lot more weight it's much more impactful if it's one of our customers saying it you know especially if they're posting it on publicly on linkedin you know anyways i was just i, I I'll, I'll stop there for, for now okay. okay so every email you you write the emails yourself Every time you reach out, you don't use like a automated email tool or, or for some reasons you, you use some automation or of sequences or cadences, that kind of software. Yeah, so um, I do use SalesLoft, you know, but pretty much every time it's, it's not automated. You know, it's a personal one-to-one -one email that I'm sending. Um, you know, we've, I, I've just had better success that way. Sometimes I will, you know, not like do a hundred percent customization on every single email. Like, like for example, you know, um, that, you know, if I see a prospect got promoted or even if they've kind of moved up the, the ladder career wise, you okay. know, and I send them that moving on up video, I could send that to not just one person. I could send that to many people, you know, okay. any prospect who has moved up in their career, which is going to be most prospects, you know, um, you know, any prospect who viewed my LinkedIn profile, I can send that, you know, somebody's watching me video, you know, yeah. so I can kind of scale it. Another thing, you know, um, it, you know, if like a lot of like 90% of the time <clears throat> when I, when I'm selling to somebody, they either have, you know, we have two, com two main competitors. I'm not going to name who they are to give them, you know, promotion, but um, most of the time, you know, I'm selling to somebody, they use one of those competitors. So, you know, I can kind of scale scale my outreach by, you know, if I know they're using one of those competitors, like I can reuse the same, you know, like value. I'll ha we have like two or three, maybe even four differentiators over competitor number one, and then two, three, four differentiators over competitor number two. So if I know they're using one of them, you know, I don't have to every single time customize type and email over and over and over. Like I can just click a button and then boom, there's that first differentiator for that competitor, drop it right into that email, hit send. You know what I mean? And if they don't reply two, three days later, I'm going to send another email and I'm going to, you know, reference 
another differentiator that we have over that competitor, but I don't have to type it, type all that stuff from scratch. Like it's already, it's already there because you know, I've, I've already sent that same type of message to other prospects in the past. So there's certain ways you can kind of scale it. If you're, if you're saying some of a lot of the same things over and over, like one, one tool, um, it's called auto text expander. Um, you know, or like there's also text expander, but they like, they increase their pricing. So we've been using a free, a free version called the uh, auto text expander <laughs> where you can kind of have these keyboard shortcuts, you know? So you just put like a keyboard shortcut and then what the act, like you just type that keyboard shortcut and then a bunch of words, you know, like if you find yourself using yeah. the same phrases over and over, you know? So I might put, uh, you know, value prop number one, boom, that's, and then that's all I have to type value prop number one. And then it just populates a whole paragraph for me, you know? So there's things like that you can kind of do to scale it a little bit too. Okay, so I think as as you said, it's like personalization. It's it's key, and even these ones that you say as like uh, already written, they have uh, they break the the standard with the GIF or with the songs, and mm -hmm. the others they 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 are so high personal because they have the competitor that you know. So what what, what else do you do to to personalize? What what do you see when when you personalize these these emails? Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that I do too, um, and you know, I mean, I don't know like how many other people this would apply to. It might be just kind of something that I can do based on what we sell here. But because what we're selling a lot of times is like data, you know, yeah. um, data for you know sales, sales intelligence type of data. So if I'm emailing somebody, I want to make that message more relevant to them. So you know, I will research who do they sell to, you know, like who's, who's, who's their buyer, you know, like, and then I click onto their company LinkedIn page or, you know, their, their company website or something. And I might get, you know, more granular and take an extra couple clicks and get like a better idea of who they sell to by clicking on their case studies on their website, you know, and um, then I'll go into sales net LinkedIn sales navigator and, you know, then pull up lead IQ and run a list of like, like their buyer. So if they sell to CIOs or they sell to, you know, chief medical information officers or whatever it might be, then in less than two minutes, I can have some data that we actually have on those buyers who that prospect is selling to. And I can like do again, a screenshot, you know, command shift four on a Mac screenshot that information and then drop that into an email and then I can scale it though because chances are that company that I'm reaching out to isn't the only company that sells to that type of buyer you know to that ideal customer profile that ICP mm -hmm. so when I do after I when I drop that 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 screenshot into the email I'll save that screenshot I'll put like sample you know manufacturing you know ma MFGR short for manufacturing, you know, data center manager or something like that. So now if I, maybe two weeks later, if I'm reaching out to another prospect who also sells to that type of person, you know, I don't have to spend the time to like run that list again. You know, yeah. I can just, um, just find that, find that screenshot on my computer, click, drop it right into the email. You know, so there's little things like that you can kind of do as well to kind of personalize that message and, and scale it as well. Um, but also, you know, like I always just look at the LinkedIn profile of not just one person, but I'll look at the LinkedIn profile of a bunch of different prospects at that company, you know, and you never know what kind of little things you might be able to pick up on. And like a lot of prospects, they have a lot of detail on their LinkedIn profile about what they do, you know? So I sometimes I'll literally just copy and paste word for word right off that prospects LinkedIn profile, the section where it's like the job description where it says what they do at that company. So under experience on the LinkedIn and it says their current job, you know, it says their title, how long they've been working there. Then below that, they, people usually put like a paragraph or a couple, a bunch of bullet points about what they actually do with that job, their roles, responsibilities, and what projects they've been working on. What did they accomplish at that job? You know, um, what, what's important to them. A lot of people have a lot of detail in there and I'll literally, I'll reference that stuff, you know, and then it, to them, it's going to look a lot more personalized. Um, also, I mean, 
Like I'll look at the mutual connections that I have with that person. You know, maybe one of those mutual connections is a customer of ours. I would, I would, I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't connected to a bunch of my customers. So step one in being able to do that is know who your customers are. Mm-hmm. I have a spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet that um, has all of our customers on it. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them, like 120, 128 of our top customers on a spreadsheet. Um, that's one column. The other column is like, what do they do? Another column is who do they sell to? Another column is who do they compete with? You know, another column is how many employees do they have? Another column is why do they buy from us? So that's kind of my Bible. Like I kind of look at who are our customers and then reverse engineer to find, you know, other companies like that, that fit that profile. Um, but anyways, then the next step is kind of like, I'll then connect on LinkedIn with some of the people who are customers of ours. So, you know, maybe um, I'll just pick out of that customer spreadsheet, you know, so I'll pick three or three to four customers that we have. I'll look in Salesforce in our CRM system and see who the person is that bought from us. Mm-hmm. And I'll go and find that person on LinkedIn and I'll connect with them. And I'll put like a personalized connection request message. And in it, I'll say, hey, Bob, thank you for being a customer of ours. Look forward to, ne- look forward to connecting, Jeremy. You know, boom, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. You know, but I'm going to do that for a bunch of cu- like five or ten customers. You know, and now a couple things will happen. One is when I see a prospect is connected to that person, I can now reference that. Hey, you're connected to so and so at Showpad. They're one of our customers. You know, like that makes it more relevant to that person. Um, you know, the other thing that can happen when you connect with a customer on LinkedIn is, you know, when you say, "Hey, Bob, thanks for being an Elite IQ customer. Look forward to connecting, Jeremy." A lot of times, they might reply back to that message, and either, you know, one time I did this, and they replied back to my message and said. Yeah, yeah, we love using Lead IQ. I actually just last week was at a conference and was telling somebody that they should check you guys out. Here's his link. To, here's his email address. So I emailed Beautiful. the guy. <laughs> I emailed the guy, and you know now he's a customer. Now I, that's that's you know uh, that, yeah. now he's a customer of ours. You know, yeah. or an, another time I did this. I you know messaged uh, connected with a, pro, a customer on LinkedIn. She replied and she said. Um, she said to me, yeah, we love using lead IQ. Feel free to name drop me and Gainsight anytime you want. So boom. Okay. You know, Gainsight's one of our larger customers. They love us. And so now I can name drop. She gave me permission, you know, to name drop her name and Gainsight. So if I see somebody's connected to her, you know, I can reference that. So referencing it, like looking at the mutual connections and kind of referencing that as well as maybe, you know, and knowing who your customers are, maybe, maybe that um, prospect you know, maybe they used to work at a company that's one of your customers, you know, mm-hmm. and you can reference yeah. that as well. So that's a few different ways that you can kind of personalize the message by just knowing, knowing who your customers are, connecting with customers on LinkedIn, and doing a little bit of research on that company, um, on, on their person's LinkedIn profile. Okay, great. Before, um, I would let you know more about LinkedIn, but before, uh, to finish the email uh, section we spoke, there's one question that says, uh, what's a good reply rate? I don't know if you check, uh, for you, you check reply rates is important for you. And in case you check, which one would you say it's a good reply rate and which is yours? Yeah. Yeah. So good question. Um, I think most people from what I've heard, like industry average for most SDRs is like somewhere between three to 5% reply rate on cold emails. Um, I, mine is actually around like 30 to 40%. So, um, that's just because, you know, I do a real, really hyper personalization. I really personalize the email. So I get somewhere around like a 30 to 40% reply rate. Um, what you should try to get is like 10%. That's kind of considered like if, you know, you're, you're doing a really good job if you can get at least 10% reply rate. So I would say start off like aim, aim for 10 because more than likely you're in that like three to 5% range, which most people, most SDRs are only getting three to 5% reply rates on their cold emails, you know, so try to get it from that three to 5% range to 10, you know, and then once you get 10%, you know, just try to keep getting better and improving, get it to 15, then get it to 20 and, and keep going from there. Do, do you measure like 
positive or negative replies. Ma many tools now are measuring that. You know, if you, if you measure that, that, because sometimes between three and five, <laughs> it doesn't say if it's good, good or bad. Yeah. Yeah, that can be tricky. Um, I think you know, like tools like Salesoft and Outreach, they might have some functionality to be kind of distinguish between, you know, positive reply and negative replies. But um, I think for the most part, I just am able to see what the overall reply rate is. Yeah. But but yeah, I mean, that's why um, just reply rate isn't, you know, a good enough statistic to just look at that on its own and figure out how good your emails are, you know, because you might be getting lots of replies, but if all of those replies are people saying, you know, get, get lost, like take me <laughs> off your list, like get out of here, then you're not doing so good. And um, so that's why it's more like the metric that you can really look at is the meetings booked. Like how many meetings are you booking? You know, how much pipeline are you actually, how many of those, okay, you're getting this reply rate. Well, what's your, how many meetings are you setting? Like how, you know, per, per month. And you can kind of, you know, most SDRs, like that's kind of the number one metric they're judged on. How many meetings did you set? How many demos did you book? You know, um, how many opportunities did, it, did you generate? But you can't just look at that number, you know, because then it's like, you don't really know what, it, what is, where they have to improve, you know, or what's, what are they doing well? What are they not doing well? You know, because if you have a high reply rate, but your meetings booked isn't very, and isn't very, you know, good, then that means, you know, you're getting these re replies, but they're not good replies, you know, so let's work on the messaging there. Maybe that's because if you're getting lots of replies, but not, you know, like high reply rate, but not a lot of meetings booked, chances are the, you're, you're maybe spam, you're maybe spamming people and sending too many emails out. You're like your, your vol, your volume, your quantity of emails is maybe good, but the quantity, but or the quantity is good, but the quality is bad. You know, like if you, if not a lot of people are actually booking meetings with you, um, but your, 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 the number of people you're reaching out to is high, then let's look at what are you saying? Maybe because a lot of, a lot of SDRs, um, managers out there, and SDRs, they're, they're trying to just hit a number of emails. Oh, I need to send out 50 emails today. I need to send out 100 emails today or 200. I got to do 100 calls and 100 emails. And when you stress the volume, stress that number, the quantity too much, usually the quality suffers. So the rep is just focused on, you know, the number of calls they have to make and the number of emails. When that's the case, you know, they're not, you, you got to slow down and personalize it more. Do the the research figure out who are you reaching out to you know like if, if you're just like oh 100 calls a day and 100 emails today well the result of that is like the what i had before i got in this call when i got an email from somebody who's a competitor of ours you know because they're just loading they're just loading it you know taking this yeah. message and then loading a list in and hit and send you know like that doesn't get the results um so slow down and re do your research, have a more relevant message for the people you're reaching out to, then you'll get high reply rates. Of course, then the balance is like, oh, how do you, how do you increase the quality? If you do that, well, then people are going to be like, oh, well, what am I? I'm only going to reach out to like five or 10 people a day. If I do that, my, I'm not going to hit the numbers, you know? So there's always kind of that balance. And that's why there's little things that I've kind of touched on, uh, touched on a little bit, ways you can kind of scale it, s certain parts of it. Like for example, um, I, we have a video case study, a one minute video, video testimonial from a customer that, you know, this guy, Matt Hines, uh, he's kind of like a sales and marketing expert you know, leader, speaks at a lot of conferences. He's very well respected in the industry. He did a one minute video testimonial. So that, you know, I literally like I, some emails, you know, if maybe say for example, like the first three or four emails that I sent a prospect in my cadence were very hyper personalized. Well, the fifth email, every single prospect is getting the Matt Hines video, <laughs> you know, like, and the sub subject line, subject line is just going to say, you know, video for Bob or video for whoever the prospect is, they open it up. Hey, so-and-so, um, you know, instead of me telling you how great our product is, figured it might be better to let one of our customers do the talking. Boom. There's the video. You know, it's not personalized at all. Like that, yeah. e you know, like I'm scaling that. That, that yeah. fifth, The fifth email I send out to everybody is that. You know, there's that, e there's that video. And then like, you know, 
should I connect with you or so-and-so out, you know, who should I connect with on this over there? Or who would be interested in talking about this more? Jeremy, you know, so there's parts of it you can kind of scale in order to find that balance, you know, between the quality of outreach and the quantity. Great. Yeah. And also uh, something important for me is when, when you measure too much the, the open rates or some SDRs, I, I, I think uh, I say that everybody has their own superpowers and some uh, they're really good at phone. Uh, they can book a lot by phone. Uh, mm -hmm. And the other with the same amount of phone calls, they book uh, little, but they are good personalizing or even getting the email of the right person, doing more research. Mm -hmm. doing, so, so yeah, it's like, uh, I, I believe this as well, that the, the, the meetings book is the, the main thing to measure and also yeah, the meetings that the person show up. You know? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe yep. you know, book, book things like that. So, yep. yeah. And another thing I would say as far as like calling and, you know, phone calls versus emails is, you know, people have to be careful with too much volume when it comes to emails. And so I would make the, I would make the distinction that you can kind of do t kick up the volume a little bit sometimes when you're calling, but not when you're emailing. Don't do email at too much of volume, you know, at too much scale because the way mail servers work and email deliverability and email security, the email security that these companies have, especially if you're selling to a bigger company, you know, a company with like 200, 500, or a thousand plus employees, if they're bigger enterprise company, maybe you're selling to companies in healthcare or law firms, um, insurance that have really highly regulated industries. They have really robust email security systems like Mimecast, Proofpoint that are blocking your sales emails from getting through. You know, so if you use certain words, you know, there could be just certain words that are in your emails that's going to flag them as spam and not get delivered. Um, if you send too many emails at the same time, you know, more than like a hundred emails at once, the chances are higher that they're going to just get caught in spam and get blocked by that company's mail server you're sending it to. If you try sending an email to more than three or four people from one company at the same time, then that also increases the chances that none of those emails will even get delivered. If you have a lot, a high percent, if you have a lot of emails from either you or even just other people from your company that are getting marked as spam. So, you know, like people, uh, it, it might not even be you, you might be sending awesome emails, but if Bob down the hall, the other rep that maybe doesn't even work at your company anymore, if he was sending a lot of spam emails that were getting clicked, marked as spam, then that's going to lower the percentage that your emails will even get delivered. So you could be sending the most awesome emails ever, but they won't even get delivered. You know, so that's why, like, you really got to be careful, you know, personalizing the emails a little bit, not do too much volume, because then if somebody clicks, you know, unsubscribe or, you know, they mark it as spam or something, that's it. Like, you're blacklisted. You're, you, you're, your company domain, you know, leadiq.com, you know, or whatever you, what company that person works for, salesforce.com or whatever it is, that domain is now being, is now blocked from any of their emails getting delivered to whoever you're trying to sell to, riteaid.com or walmart.com, you know, their domain. You don't get any of those emails delivered. So you got to be careful doing too much volume with email. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff with phone though. You know what I mean? There's no like, there's no email, there's no phone security, you know, the systems that are trying to, so that's why you, if you're worried, if you're in a, uh, maybe you're a company that needs to do more scale and you have a big, you know, open market, you know, you have a, a huge address, total addressable market that you can reach out to and you don't have that many customers yet. And there's not, you don't have a big sales team. So you just a ton of people that you can reach out to and you just want to get the volume up, like get more people in your funnel, book, a, book a lot of meetings, you know, and do, do more volume. Okay. But just do that with phone, you know, maybe get a, get a list and bang through a hundred calls a day, but don't try to re, don't try to email a hundred people every day. Um, because you know, they're all just going to get caught in spam. And if you book a meeting on the phone, you try to send that person an email, they're never going to get it, you know? So be careful. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Great advice. Yeah. And, and I know many cases that sending ma massive blasts of, of email that there are some tools that they even, even can do sequences at scale, but uh, you also have to make, if you want to do it and if you do, we'll do it anyway, maybe you have to make a quick test first that, 
at least you have good replies where they don't mm -hmm. reply, take me off your list. Like, yeah, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good advice. Um, yeah. One, um, what, I want to know more about two, uh, we have 10 minutes, but <laughs> I would like to take the most of uh, LinkedIn and phone. Uh, how do you use both? You said once that you have to, an SDR should live on LinkedIn, I, I heard. So, uh, well, both, how, how do you use it? How, how, how do you get more prospects or, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, I, I, number one is just kind of like I was touching on before, doing some research on the account and on that prospect that you're reaching out to, to have a more relevant message for them. So just that like that research, that account research and the contact level research um, to, you know, personalize that messaging a little bit is the number one, you know, value of LinkedIn and, and you know, as well as just the targeting, you know, so the three kind of pillars when you look at sales development and what you should be, the three different areas that a rep could be improving and, you know, when they're doing the job is targeting, messaging, um, you know, your, your targeting and, and your messaging and your activity, you know, so the activity is only one out of those three, like how many people are you reaching out to, you know, that's the activity, like, you know, you have to get that, that's important, but the tart, you know, you could reach out to as many people as you want, but if your messaging is not good, you know, then the activity doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you're targeting, maybe your messaging is good and your activity is good, but if your targeting isn't, then it's not going to matter. Like targeting is kind of the number one, you know, number one most important thing, I think. By targeting, I mean, who are you reaching out to? What accounts? What, what companies are you reaching out to? And what people at those accounts, you know? Um, and so for that, like, that's kind of also the biggest value of LinkedIn is, you know, I recommend, you know, anybody watching this use LinkedIn sales navigator. If you don't have LinkedIn sales navigator, you can still do this stuff on the regular free version of LinkedIn <clears throat> by just building a list and kind of segmenting a list on there on LinkedIn to find the right, you know, by putting in different search parameters based on like titles or geography that you want to sell into, what industries, what company size, you know, what you put all that stuff in there. If you do have Sales Navigator, you can get really specific and granular with a targeted search by putting a bunch of different keywords into that keyword field and put them in quotes separated by or in capitals. And then you hit search to get really narrowed down to find the right people and find the right accounts by using those Boolean searches in Sales Navigator. So that's kind of, you know, the biggest thing with LinkedIn is finding the right accounts, finding the right people at those accounts. You know, because LinkedIn is the most up-to-date and accurate source of people, where they work and what their role is at their company. You know, people, <clears throat> you change a job, you update your LinkedIn right away. So just that targeting piece is like the biggest biggest value of LinkedIn of just knowing and having that peace of mind, knowing that you're reaching out to the right accounts and the right people that are more likely to fit, you know, who look, look at your customers, who's buying from you now? Like, you know, who are your customers? Find more people, find more companies like that. Well, where are you gonna do that? Go on LinkedIn, you know? And what, who are the people that you should reach out to? Well, go into Salesforce and look at the titles, who bought from you, was it a COO? Was it a VP of sales? Was it director of sales operations? Look at the titles of those people in Salesforce that, that bought from you and that you know were evaluating your product when they bought from you. Find people that have those titles um, on, on LinkedIn. So that's kind of you know also the biggest value of it too. Great, and what, what about phone? Do you make cold call? Uh, do you reach out when, when they reply the email? Yeah. yeah, so I usually do like a double tap, you know, I mean, I, before I email, if I'm going to email anybody, then I am going to call them first because it's more direct, you know, like I could, I could spend like five minutes trying to like do a bunch of research and like craft uh, a very clever email that's really personalized and stuff. And by the time I am done typing it all out, you know, then I have to wait for the prospect to see it. And then they might be busy and they might not see it for a while. And then they, they got to respond. Like it's just a lot more direct to just pick up the phone and call them, you know, and, you know, instead of having this back and forth, what you could do 10 emails back and forth and take like two weeks doing that, that could be done with like a two minute phone call. So I usually, um, 
I will, if I, if I, if I see somebody on LinkedIn, I, I want to reach out to that account. They're the right account. They're the right contact at, at that account. I will click a button and I pick up the phone and I call them. Um, and you know, since I have sales loft, you know, it has that dialer feature. It's, you know, click a button and it calls. I don't have to like manually dial a phone. Um, you know, so I, I will call and then leave a voicemail. And if I don't get through, then I'll send an email. Um, but yeah, and also, like you said, I mean, I also, I'm always checking that sales loft ticker. Um, to see who's opening my emails, who's clicking on my emails and viewing them, and you know how many times did they view the email? That can that also kind of trigger triggers me to pick up the phone and call people as well. Do you have like a ranking of engagement? Like you open a ranking and say these are the most open emails, or or you you see that there is one that is being opened too much and you just press the phone. Yeah, I just kind of pick up the phone and call them at that point. You know, at the yeah. same time. Um, I also kind of just have this system in place that I kind of just operate on like a scale of one to 10 and I don't have a tool. It's, this isn't in a tool or anything. It's kind of, you know, it, it's just kind of how I manage it is I, I have a running like every single day on my calendar at 5 PM. It's, it's just this thing on my calendar that has a bunch of companies listed there. Those are companies that you know, like to use a football analogy, they're on the one yard line. I got to just get them into the end zone. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like for whatever, like on a scale of one to 10, they're a nine. 10 would be, I booked a meeting with them. You know, the demo happened. The demo went great. You know, they're moving forward in our sales process. One on a scale of one to 10 would be that company has no idea who I am. They have no idea who Lead IQ is. It's completely cold. You know, and then there's everything in between. But like an eight or a nine would be like they, you know, one, one example is this guy replied to my email that I sent him last Monday and he said to me, Hey, Jeremy, sounds good. Let's set up a call for Thursday. And then I replied to that email with some times that were available on Thursday. He never got back to me to book the meeting on Thursday. So now here it is the following week on Wednesday and I'm still trying to kind of chase him down and, get that meeting on the calendar. Like that's, that's a nine out of 10. That's on the one yard line on the, on the football field. You just got to get it into the end zone. So, you know, I kind of just manage that in you know, on my own kind of just like uh, by putting it on my calendar, just know, okay, these are the five companies that are a nine, you know, like I want to make sure I stay on these ones and get them across the finish line, you know, get them across the goal line. Yeah. Like they've already kind of shown a lot of interest. They've opened a bunch of emails. They replied to my emails. I've had conversations with them. You know, I've identified pain points and challenges. You know, I, I, I know, you know, they just haven't quite committed yet to that date and time for the meeting to happen. Um, you know, so I, so those are going to be ones that I kind of prioritize more. You know, um, and then after that, maybe the ones that are like a five, six or seven where I, there's been engagement there. They just haven't, you know, um, really maybe replied or anything like that. I just kind of manage and kind of prioritize as you get higher up on the chain. I put more of a priority on reaching out to those prospects. How do you create that list? Like you when you receive the, the reply email, you create a task, say high priority. Uh, it's a nine or how, how, how do you keep the register? Because we have telephone, email, we have lots of sources of information, but you have to unify them in one, maybe. Yeah, yeah I mean, I just kind of manage that like at on a random like ad hoc kind of level. I just kind of know myself like when I'm, you know, a lot of it is in sales loft, you know, like managing my tasks throughout the day of who I'm supposed to call, who I'm supposed to email. But, you know, a couple ways that kind of trigger me to, you know, kind of prioritize that lead, you know, on a higher level is one um, I'm always checking that sales loft ticker of who's you know opening and viewing my emails and how many opens did it get and all that stuff two is you know did I get like a referral to somebody if I already like has somebody at that company given me either a bunch of information about what their challenges are or their pain points or their priorities or what tools that they're using. You know, did they, maybe it's somebody at that company referred me to somebody else, like, you know, just that kind of engagement level. But then also I'm always checking on LinkedIn, clicking who viewed my LinkedIn profile, you know, Oh, this person, you know, that, that that's just, that's engagement right there. So, and then the other part that will trigger me to prioritize an account and a lead more so than others um, is just like the fit like looking at that profile of that account, 
you know, like some things that we look for if I'm prospecting, you know, if I see, um, if I click on that company on LinkedIn and then I click where it says, you know, if they have 500 employees, I click that number of employees in sales navigator and I look at those people and then I narrow it down. I click on sales and I click business development for function and I eyeball it and I see a bunch of people that have the, the LinkedIn um, icon next to them. That means they have sales navigator. Yeah. That if people have sales navigator, they probably need lead IQ. So just kind of that fit. And then also in our own tool, we can see technographic information. So I can see if they use Salesforce, if they use Salesloft outreach, you know, if they use a bunch of tools that we integrate with, that kind of gives me an idea. They're a better fit. How big is that account? You know, we're kind of internally here focusing a little bit more right now on companies that have 200 to a thousand employees, you know, because a thousand more than a thousand, those deals are taking too long for us for them to close less than a thousand. The deals are, are less than 200 employees and the deals are too small. So we're kind of focusing more on 200 to a thousand. So that kind of goes into that fit. You know, is it how many employees are they? What tools do they use? Do they use sales navigator? Um, you know, what who do they sell to? What, what industry do they sell to? how active on LinkedIn are, are their people. So I'll kind of look at that stuff and, you know, so it's not like one little, you know, one neat formula that kind of takes all of that stuff into account. Yeah. It's kind of just, <clears throat> I have to kind of like manage it in my head, you know, almost and just kind of know, okay, <laughs> these, these accounts I want to stay in front of these accounts. I want to make sure I keep reaching out to them until I book that meeting. Okay. Great. Well, we are almost, well, we are, it's, it's four o'clock here, it's three there. Um, do you have 10, mi 10 more minutes and we can do Q and A or if you're kind of- Sure, busy. sure, I got a few more minutes. Yeah, okay, yeah. We, can, we can do some Q and A. You can, people can ask on, on the box. Uh, one, it's from Pablo. He says on cold calls, when, when you get the executive secretary, how do you get past that barrier? So good question. Like one, one way, you know, not to be too salesy and selling lead IQ here or anything, but um, part of our value is being able to get cell phone numbers for prospects. So, you know, that way, if you, because we have, everybody has these everywhere they go. Like nobody goes anywhere. Like, I mean, <laughs> without their yeah. cell phone, you know, yeah. um, they, you don't even go into the bathroom without it. And um, so, you know, like, and, 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 and they're going to pick up the prospect is going to pick up, not their, not their assistant, not their secretary is going to pick up. So um, if you're able to get cell phone numbers, that's, you know, that's, that's helpful. Um, but if you do run into gatekeepers and secretaries, you know, my, my strategy has just been very polite, you know, be very polite with them. Don't, you know, be, you know, abrasive at all. And don't try to kind of steamroll past them. Be very polite. Um, a few words that usually work pretty well um, when you're speaking to them is, um, I'm hoping you can help me by just saying that to a gatekeeper, a secretary, I'm hoping that you can help me, you know, that's going to make that person feel more important. Like they're actually, you know, making a difference and they're going to want to kind of be on your side. Um, you know, and you know, just kind of, and when they say, obviously the number one question you always get from a gatekeeper is what's the call regarding, you know, I mean, there's like a, curb your enthusiasm skit <laughs> about that. Like, you know, when Larry David doesn't want to say to the person what the call is regarding, you know? So we, we always get that, oh, what's this call regarding? So don't be, uh, and what 90% of the time, if you're a sales rep, you call a, a prospect, you get the gatekeeper and they say, what's this call regarding? 90% of the time, sales reps do this. They go, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm calling about, <laughs> We're the, lead, we're the leading provider of digital transformation systems for the insurance industry. And then the person is, and then you're just going to get hung up on. I mean, like, you know, instead just talk to them like a real person, you know, like, um, what's the call regarding? Make it an initiative. Make it, like, speak in terms of what is going to get the, that prospect, like, promoted, what's going to get them, what's going to make them look good know what metrics that they're judged on. Like, so, you know, for me, um, the people I'm reaching out to, they're usually responsible for increasing the pipeline of their companies, more pipeline, more, you know, not more leads, but like the leads that come in, like actually converting to more opportunities. So I might, you know, if they say, what's this call regarding, I'm going to, I probably say, um, helping Bob two X his pipeline generation by the end of Q3, mm. you know, like, Say it and like always kind of have, don't, 
so it's like a don't be thrown off when the gatekeeper says what's this call regarding like 90 percent of, of sales reps are like oh 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 like don't like be ready for it you know like you know they're gonna say what's this call regarding you know like have something ready know what you're gonna say to that and then b when you do say it like have it actually pack up have some value like why should this gatekeeper go to that you know vp of sales or that you know cfo and get put you through to them you know um, show that you know a little bit something <coughs> about their business. Okay. About, uh, you, you say the phone, the phone number, there's another question from Pablo that says, if, do you well, do you use WhatsApp for first contact or you know, if you have any advice on there? Um, I'm sorry, what? If you use WhatsApp. For, yeah. What's for, up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you you mean like how are you how say how are you doing what's up that kind of thing yeah like I I guess that the question it's from like uh, yeah for first contact for reaching out if you mm -hmm. any any time did WhatsApp for reach out or if you have any any advice for that here here using, in Latin America WhatsApp is like very popular yeah <laughs> oh using uh, what what's WhatsApp I actually yeah. have never used that so I'm not sure okay. um okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've just kind of used, you know, phone, email, LinkedIn. Sometimes I'll use direct mail and I'll send a package to the prospect. I have not used WhatsApp, so. Okay, yeah, no, my, my advice with WhatsApp is like be 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 mindful because also WhatsApp, if they, mm -hmm. it's like email, if they put you spam, if you, you send a message, they, they put you spam, they can even block your line. I, I work a lot with WhatsApp, so that's why I, I mm -hmm. know that, but yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, two more. Um, there is one from Sylvain. It says, regarding the cold calls, how do you prepare your speech? Uh, what's the key when starting to speak with a decision maker? Yeah. So, how I usually open it is I say, uh, they answer, and I say, you know, hey, Bob, um, this is Jeremy at Lead IQ. I know I'm calling out of the blue here. Is it cool if I explain the reason for my call in less than 30 seconds? That's kind of boom. You know, I just say that. Um, and you notice, like, the way I say that, like, I, I don't say, um, <clears throat> I don't say, hey, this is Jeremy from Lead IQ. How are you doing today? You know, like, they're just going to be like, uh, I was doing good until you called me and interrupted my day. What the hell do you want? You know, like, I try, I don't say this, how are you doing or how, you know, how, how are you? Like, you know, they don't know me like they, they don't I don't really I don't really care, you know, like you just kind of cut out that like that chit chat in the beginning. Um, I also don't say I'm calling with lead IQ, you know, at the beginning. Well, yeah, no, no kidding. It's a call like they, they know that it's a phone call yeah. <laughs> by saying I'm calling with lead IQ. It just kind of sounds like. You know, oh, I'm I'm calling with your, you know, it just sounds like really like a like a telemarketing kind of call. Yeah. So I try to sound more relaxed, and so when I when I say, oh, is it is it cool? Is it cool if I explain why I'm calling? The reason for my call in less than 30 seconds. You know, like it's just kind of more relaxed. It's more casual. It's more not not as not as formal. Um, and then you know that signals to them like it's not going to take a long time, just 30 seconds. So I'm gonna you know explain why I'm calling. Then when they say, yeah, sure. Okay, that 30 seconds, you know, I'm probably going to say, well, you know, we, we help other, you know, VPs of sales at SaaS companies who are looking to, you know, increase pipeline generation by doing blah, 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 blah. kind of like really being personalized and, and letting you letting that person know you're putting, you know, the type of their, their industry. So you personalize that value prop to their industry, their title and the metrics that that person is judged on. So if I say, you know, <clears throat> we help VPs of sales in the SAFT, in the software, in the software industry, generate more pipeline for their inside sales team by cutting down on, you know, time spent on you know, time spent list building and manual data entry so they can spend more time selling, you know, like, is that something you'd be open to a conversation about? Like it's, it's just kind of like putting it, you know, to, you know, in, in terms that they would actually, that would actually resonate with them. Like just really knowing your buyer and like, that's the biggest thing I think is having a deep understanding of your buyer, what's important to them, like what metrics are they measured on? Um, you know, so that it, you're not asking them, Oh, what's what keeps you up at night? Like yeah. you should know, you yeah. should know what keeps them up at night. Like you don't ask them, 
oh, what's, what are your goals for, you know, Q2? You should know, like do some, do some research, know your buyer um, to know what should be important to them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I like a lot. And yeah, in fact, it's not talking about you, like until they really say, I have this problem. I, I need help with this because when you explain yourself, they don't care. They, they just, they just want to reach your goals. So first put them yep. in that, that context and that. And, and the other thing I like a lot is the first uh, phrase you use that say, sorry, I'm appearing here of, of the blue. Because usually when, when you call call, there is a, a subtle, um, how do you say? A subtle situation between the speaker and the, and the other person of, uh, how do you say, how, I, I, I see you fr frozen. I don't know if maybe he, Jeremy lost the connection. <laughs> so we will back. Um, but bueno, I, what, what I was, ah, here, you're back. Yeah, what, what I was saying is that there is, when you call, um, some, sometimes the, um, the, the person says, oh, this is a salesperson, I want to take them out. So you say, yeah, yeah, I know this is, I know you, you probably want to take me out and you don't like this call. So I just want to take 30 seconds of the time. That, I like it also uh, mm -hmm. a lot. And using, you use, we help this type of customer. I like it a lot because it's like, you give like social proof and you say, okay, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not just calling you because I know because you're a VP of marketing and we help VP of marketing. I really, really like that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just, you know, putting, packing a punch, like showing them, you know, how have you, and, and also kind of, you know, just get rid of all the marketing jargon, you know, get rid of the buzzwords. Don't be, mm -hmm. you know, don't say things like, you know, oh, well, algorithms and artificial intelligence and machine learning and you know data science and you know we're we do all this stuff and it's just like you know the prospect is just going to tune you out talk like a real person you know um <clears throat> you know and and one way to to know that is um look at look at think about the communication that you have with internal employees at your company you know how do you talk to each other you know, like, and also when, when that person, when you get inbound leads, when, when people come inbound to your website and ask for information, like what, the, what, how do they talk? Like, what are they asking for? Yeah. You know, like somebody comes to your website, they fill out a form, they say, Hey, I want to talk to somebody because I'm having this problem or I need something that can do this, this, and this. Okay. Boom. That's what you should be saying. Now, when you call people, you know, they need something that can, you know, make it faster and easier for sales reps to be able to prospect on LinkedIn and quickly source the contact information um, without the rep having to do a bunch of manual stuff. Like, okay, that's what the prospect, that's how they said it, you know? Yeah. Like, so I'm going to speak their language. And when I call that person, I'm going to say, hey, we talked to, uh, I was just, I was talking to another SDR manager who's struggling with their reps being able to you know, getting bogged down with all this list building and, and sourcing of leads and, you know, they're clicking all this stuff and it takes them too long. We, I thought we might be able to help, help you guys out with that too. Yeah. What, what do you think? Can we have a conversation? Like, you know, like that, what I just said is very different than, hey, I'm with Lead IQ. We have a data science, machine learning algorithm that helps yeah. companies <laughs> do digital transformation. And that, you know what I mean? Like, it's just uh, talk like a person. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Okay, well, Jeremy, there are many questions that we couldn't answer. Uh, if they want to reach you out, they can reach you out by LinkedIn, I guess. Uh, you are Jeremy Leville. Leville is right? Yeah, it's um, Levier. Levier. Yeah, so ah, okay. definitely <laughs> feel free to um, connect with me on LinkedIn or shoot me an email. It's jeremy at leadiq.com. Okay, great. So I feel identified with that you don't play the guitar. I have the, the key, the piano here, but I roughly play piano so oh, i don't know if I, I will start prospecting with the piano or maybe next, it, webinar, it <laughs> next webinar we can make a prospecting concert you with the guitar i will, will with the piano <laughs> so, sounds good <laughs> so yeah so thanks a lot uh, for your time and to the rest of the audience this webinar is being recorded it will be on youtube and now we have the podcast primera reunion podcast it's available still on spotify and it's being distributed on the networks so everybody will, will listen this webinar, maybe whether they are washing the dishes or were walking to work or on, on the subway. There you go. Yeah, so you will have more places to, to listen this 
recordings. So thanks very much, uh, Chairman, for your time. Is there is anything else you want to say, or yeah? No, yeah, I think I think we covered quite a bit here, and yeah. and I don't want to. Um, sometimes when you cover too much, you know, then people. Yeah. They're not able to, to absorb all the information, so I yeah. try not to throw too much at people all, all at one time. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, for me, it was very interesting. I learned lots of stuff, lots of stuff, and well, I guess someone connected <laughs> have learned uh, something. So thanks a lot. Uh, it was really useful. I think it was one of the best webinars we made so far. Yeah, we don't have too awesome. much, but I think it's one of the best. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, Glad to hear it. Thanks very much, Jeremy. All right. Thanks, Andres. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.